Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. About three weeks ago I've uploaded a video that compares the Runcom Split 2, the Runcom Split 1, the Ishin Stack X and the Runcom 3. After I released the video, a user named Primoz Iskra commented that he designed a case for the Runcom Split 2 in order to use it externally like the Runcom 3 because unfortunately the Runcom 3 has been discontinued because it has some copyright issues with GoPro so Runcom stopped selling it. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to print the case that Primo's designed to fit the Runcom Split 2 inside and then I'm gonna show you how it looks. So first let's print the case. So this is the result. By the way, I followed Primo's instructions and I printed it at 100% filament. As you can see here, the bottom part didn't come out well because when I removed it, it just got detached, but it's going to be all right and I'm not going to reprint it because this is not bad. And I think I'm going to add a bottom layer anyhow. And the most important thing is that the top part is fine. So in order to use it, you have to insert the Runcam Split 2 in the middle, which I'm going to do in a minute. And then all you need to do, just use some screws. I'm going to use this M3 screws. And actually, I tried it before and it worked great. So it will make sure that these two parts are attached. So what you need to do in order to fit it in, you will have to align the camera inside. So you are going to see the holes on both sides and then you can secure the camera. So now they are aligned. It's hard to see but now the screw is inside and it is secured. As you can see on the left side we have cutouts for the micro SD card, the USB port and also the Wi-Fi model. So you need to align it in this manner that everything is accessible and then we can just close it like that. And the GST is popping from the bottom so now we can just put the screws and by the way you can see that the buttons are usable because of this design I think that Primo's did a very nice job because you can click these buttons and you have all the access ports that are needed and that's great I also recommend you to remove the stickers because they will just get in your way and now it's going to be much easier to close it now everything is wrapped up. So actually I didn't do what is this case is designed to. So use this cutout in order to power up the camera because you don't want to do it on the bottom. That's why it was designed in this manner. My wires were a little bit short so I'm going to open it up later and extend the wires and then I'm going to use this cutout over here. If you want better results I recommend to print it in TPU because I think it's going to give you also a better protection and also printing it in a, an orange color probably will give you a nicer looking result as well. It feels very light, much lighter than the Runcom 3, so let's see how much it weighs. And the weight is only 35.4 grams, comparing to the Runcom 3, which weighs 66.8 grams. So it's almost half of the Runcom 3. And as you can see in my comparison video between the Runcom Split 2 and the Runcom 3 and the Asian Stack X and the Runcom Split 1, the quality of the Runcom Split 2 was almost the same as the Runcom 3. So this is a very nice solution. You can mount the camera on any frame that the Runcom 3 is going to fit on. And I recommend, especially if your print didn't go well, such as mine, to put something on the bottom, let's say a rubber material, and then you could put Velcro on top, and then it's also going to reduce the vibration of the camera. Another nice thing that if, especially if you have a 3D printer, if you crash it and the case will be broken, you can just print another case. And if you want extra protection, you can put some glass or an extra layer that will help to protect the lens. Although I think that it's pretty well protected inside this case. So just to make sure that it's working, I'm going to insert a micro SD card. It's easier to use tweezers also to remove it. Let's power it up. And you can see that it's working. It starts recording. And if you want to stop the recording process, 
press this button, now it stopped. And if you want to start the recording process again, you can press this button and now you can see the blue LED indicator is recording. And that's actually pretty neat. As I mentioned before, both ports are accessible. For example, if you want to connect the Wi-Fi module, you can just plug it in and it's going to work. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. Many thanks to Primos who designed this case. I'm gonna put a link to the files and to the Thingiverse page. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section below and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.